While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you not be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he. And the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified. For such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Today we hear in the first reading and then in the Gospel some signs and in the first reading it is interpreted for us and we may say this is a sign of the coming of the kingdom and in the first reading we are given an interpretation of the signs it is quite a long piece that we have read and what we have heard is that there are different materials to the statue the one in the dream of King Nebuchadnezzar, which Daniel interpreted. And yet, in the key interpretation of Daniel, there is only one, one powerful thing that smashed all this and turned them into dust. And that is, the kingdom of God is depicted as a stone. Stone. This occurs as well in the gospel, in the gospels in the other in the other signs about the kingdom we are told in other parts of the gospel that this is a stone which builders rejected but here in the first reading we are told this is a stone that no human hand has made it stands in contrast with the gold the silver the iron, and all the beautiful materials that were made to represent kingdoms that human hands have made. Whatever distinction of wealth, of honor, of beauty is there, is crushed as fine as dust by this rolling stone that no human hand has made. And we are told at the end of this parable, it's like a parable of the first reading, that this stone which no human hand has made turned into a large mountain that covered the entire earth. In other words, the meaning of the kingdom is here taught to us as something that lies beyond human ambitions, human plans, human desires. The kingdom is not something that comes from our minds or our desires. It is not of our own making. So it is hard to understand. You cannot predict when it will come and that it is already here. Jesus warns us not to be deceived. The first reading and the gospel actually allow us to understand if we push it further, the last book in the New Testament, a book of revelations, whereby we are given the different forms of human wills the letter to seven churches in that, in that particular book, 
gives us an, an, an understanding of human kingdoms, human communities, even individual behaviors that differ from the very nature of the kingdom of God that he wishes to establish. That book is the same as this book in the first reading that tells us all these things will be crushed as fine as dust. That is why from the human perspective, we fear. We fear that the hand of God will put to naught all our human ambitions, all our human projects, all our human desires and dreams. That is the truth. The hand of God is not the hand of man. Our, the making of our own hands, our own plans, our temples, not one stone upon another. The day will come when all of them will be thrown down. The only concern of the disciples is that when will that happen? And for Jesus, that itself is deception. To be so concerned about the time, the time when we can still have our little plans prosper. But for Jesus, that is not the exact interpretation of the coming of the kingdom. We cannot just, like, str struggle, wrestle, beg with God to give us more time because our concern is just about the time when the end will happen. But for Jesus, the real preparation is the acceptance of the will of God in our lives. And that acceptance is that it is beyond our hands. Do not follow them, those who tell you this is the solution, this is the way. Do not be deceived. So, only the person who trusts the Lord, only the person who entrusts one's life to the will of God, to the word of God, only that person will succeed in surviving the coming of that time when not one stone upon another will be left without being thrown down. So my brothers and sisters, instead of asking the Lord, Lord, when? Lord, when will that time happen? We, like Jesus' command to us today, should rather say, should rather be careful that we do not be deceived, meaning that we welcome the Lord because He alone establishes the kingdom in us, in our world, in our hearts. And when the kingdom is established by the Lord, then there is no fear of the end that is to come, then there is no fear that the hand of God will break our plans or will usher in us, despite all our shortcomings, something that can never be taken away, something that can never be moved, something that is the real cause of our prosperity, not our plans, not our works, not our will or our desires, but really the kingdom of God that happens in us, even if we do not plan about it. Let us ask the Lord to give us the freedom of mind and heart, to give us the will to be able to welcome his kingdom 
into our hearts and into our lives. This is the meaning of the end. Like the last week of the liturgical calendar, the end. And this is the meaning of waiting for the Lord. Waiting for the Lord's coming. That is the meaning of Advent. In this in-between time, let us ask the Lord to strengthen our hearts and wills for the coming of His kingdom.